All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Sunil Verma and with me is Saira Muchtaba. The headlines. Government's flagship program, Digital India, completes six years. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to virtually interact with beneficiaries. Today is GST Day. Government to honor the taxpayers who have been part of GST's success story. Prime Minister to address the doctor's community at a program organized by Indian Medical Association this afternoon. Union Cabinet approves stimulus package of 6,28,000 crore rupees as part of Atmanirbhar Bharat package. Cabinet gives nod for revised implementation strategy of BharatNet through public-private partnership model in 16 states. Interest rates to remain unchanged on small savings schemes, including National Savings Certificate and Public Provident Fund for the second quarter of current financial year. Country crosses the milestone of administering 33 crore 54 lakh COVID vaccines. National COVID recovery rate increases to 96.92%. In Uttar Pradesh, cluster-based mega COVID vaccination drive to be launched from today to inoculate more than 10 crore people in three months. In chess, Abhimanyu Mishra becomes youngest grandmaster. In women's cricket, England beat India by five wickets in the second ODI, clinched the series 2-0. And in Wimbledon tennis, Novak Djokovic, Kei Nishikori and Matteo Berrettini advance. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also to help others to get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain do gas duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011 2397 and 1075. And now the news. The government's flagship program, Digital India, has completed six years today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched this ambitious program on the 1st of July 2015. On the occasion, Mr. Modi will interact with beneficiaries of Digital India via video conferencing. The program is being organized by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Earlier, the Prime Minister had said, the vision of Digital India program is to transform India into a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. Digital India has become a way of life, particularly for the poor, marginalized and for those in government. Thanks to Digital India, our nation has witnessed a more human-centric approach to development. Using technology on such a large scale has brought about several life changes for our citizens. Minister of Electronics and Information Technology, Ravi Shankar Prasad, will also be present on the occasion. We have more from our correspondent. Digital India has turned out to be one of the biggest success stories of New India. It has enabled services, brought government closer to citizens, promoted citizen engagement and empowered people. The Digital India journey in the past six years has centered around empowerment, inclusion and digital transformation. It has positively impacted all aspects of the lives of Indian citizens through Aadhaar, direct benefit transfer, common services center, DigiLocker and mobile-based among services. Through Aadhaar, the government has provided digital identity to more than 129 crore residents of the country with 99% coverage of adult population. The combination of Jandhan bank accounts, mobile phones and digital identity through Aadhaar is helping the poor in receiving the benefits directly into their bank accounts. Digital India's initiatives have also played a pivotal role during the COVID-19 situation by providing healthcare services through East and Uni telemedicine service. Anand Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. The goods and services tax GST system The country's biggest tax reform is going to complete four years today. During these years, several key policy initiatives were taken by the government to make the GST system and compliance mechanism 
simple, transparent and technology driven. GST is a remarkable example of cooperative federalism wherein all the decisions have been taken in the GST council through consensus. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said GST has been a milestone in the economic landscape of India. Mr Modi has said it has decreased the number of taxes, compliance burden and overall tax burden on common man while significantly increasing transparency, compliance and overall collection. The government has decided to honor that taxpayers who have been a part of its success story. The finance ministry said government will honor 54,439 taxpayers. The introduction of the goods and service tax is a very significant step in indirect tax reforms. It came into effect from 1st of July in 2017. It promotes the idea of one nation, one tax, one market. With the introduction of GST, ease of doing business has significantly improved in the country. During the last four years, the central government, in close coordination with the states and union territories, are continuously engaged in making the GST compliance system simple and transparent. To make the system hassle-free, several key measures have been taken to. To reduce the compliance burden quarterly return monthly payment facility has been introduced from january this year to provide relief to the small taxpayers the government has introduced a facility of nil filing of gstr three way returns by sms which helped 22 lakh taxpayers e invoicing facility has also been implemented bhupender singh air news delhi Prime Minister Narendra Modi will also address the doctors community at a program organized by the Indian Medical Association this afternoon. He said in a tweet that India is proud of the efforts of all doctors in fighting COVID-19. The day is observed on 1st of July every year to acknowledge the role of doctors in keeping the nation healthy. The government started observing Doctors Day from 1991 to recognize the contributions of former Bengal Chief Minister Dr B C Roy. He played an important role in the establishment of the Medical Council of India and the Indian Medical Association. He was also conferred with the Bharat Ratna on 4th of February 1961. In his Mann ki Baat program last Sunday, Prime Minister Modi spoke about the contributions made by doctors and corona warriors during the COVID-19 pandemic. कोरोना काल में डॉक्टर्स के योगदान के हम सब आभारी हैं हमारे डॉक्टर्स ने अपनी जान की परवाह न करते हुए हमारी सेवा की है इसलिए इस बार नेशनल डॉक्टर्स डे और भी खास हो जाता है साथियों मेडिसिन की दुनिया के सबसे सम्मानित लोगों में से एक हिपोक्रेट्स ने कहा था वेर एवर द आर्ट ऑफ मेडिसिन इज लव देर इज ऑल्सो ए लव ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी यानी जहाँ आर्ट ऑफ मेडिसिन के लिए प्रेम होता है वहाँ मानवता के लिए भी प्रेम होता है डॉक्टर्स इसी प्रेम की शक्ति से ही हमारी सेवा कर पाते हैं इसलिए हमारा ये दायित्व है कि हम उतने ही प्रेम से उनका धन्यवाद करें उनका हौसला बढ़ाए The Union Cabinet yesterday gave approval to the stimulus package of 6 lakh 28 thousand crore rupees announced by the Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman as part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat package on Monday. Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Zavrekar informed about the decision in a media briefing yesterday. Mr Zavrekar said the government has also given approval to the announcement made regarding extension of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana from May to November this year. The financial implication this year over the scheme will be over 93000 crore rupees. The government has decided to keep the interest rates unchanged on small savings schemes including national savings certificate NSC and public provident fund PPF for the second quarter of the current financial year 2021-22. The second quarter starts today and ends on 30th of September. Ministry of Finance said that the rate of interest on various small savings schemes for the second quarter of 2021-22 will remain unchanged from the current rates applicable for the first quarter of this financial year ppf will continue to earn 7.1% interest rate and nsc will offer an interest rate of 6.8% president ramnath govind and vice president m venkaiah naidu have sent their greetings on the occasion of national doctors day the president in a tweet says that The day should be celebrated as a tribute to dedication of doctors to treat the ill to the best of their ability. Mr. Kovin said that in COVID-19 times their service has gone beyond the call of duty. He said the country is deeply indebted to these selfless angels 
who have risked their lives to save ours. Vice President M. Benkaya Naidu has saluted all members of the medical fraternity for rendering selfless service and working round the clock to save others' lives by risking their own. In a tweet, Mr. Naidu said that the pandemic has put tremendous stress on the country's doctors and their families. On the occasion of National Doctors' Day, Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Zavrekar has saluted the doctors and all other healthcare workers who fought against the pandemic and saved the nation. National Investigation Agency, NIA, yesterday arrested two lashkar e terrorists wanted in the Bhanga railway station blast case in Bihar. Both the key accused, who hailed from Shamli in Uttar Pradesh, were arrested from Hyderabad. A case was registered on the 17th of this month over the parcel blast at the Bhanga railway station and later NIA had taken up the investigation. NIA said the preliminary investigation and examination of the accused persons revealed a transnational conspiracy hatched by top operatives of LET to execute terror acts across India. One of the arrested accused had visited Pakistan in the year 2012 and had received training from handlers of LET. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Government's flagship program, Digital India, completes six years. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to virtually interact with beneficiaries. Today is GST Day. Government to honor the taxpayers who have been part of GST success story. Prime Minister to address the doctors community at a program organized by the Indian Medical Association this afternoon. Union Cabinet approved stimulus package of 6,28,000 crore rupees as part of Atmanirbhar Bharat package. Cabinet gives nod for revised implementation strategy of Bharat Net through public-private partnership model in 16 states. Interest rates to remain unchanged on small savings schemes, including National Savings Certificate and Public Provident Fund for the second quarter of current financial year. Country crosses the milestone of administering 33 crore 54 lakh COVID vaccines. National COVID recovery rate increases to 96.92%. In Uttar Pradesh, cluster-based mega COVID vaccination drive to be launched from today to inoculate more than 10 crore people in three months. In chess, Abhimanyu Mishra becomes youngest grandmaster. In women's cricket, England beat India by five wickets in the second ODI, clinched the series 2-0. And in Wimbledon tennis, Novak Djokovic, Kei Nishikori and Matthew Berrettini advance. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The centre is disseminating awareness of national helpline numbers for the benefit of citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The helpline number of the Health and Family Welfare Ministry is 1075. The Child Helpline number is 1098. For senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the helpline number is 14567. The helpline number of the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhans for Psychological Support is 080-4611007. The Ayush COVID-19 Counseling Helpline number is 1443. And MyGov WhatsApp help desk number is 9013151515. The Health Ministry today said the national COVID recovery rate has increased to 96.92%. Over 60,000 patients recovered during the last 24 hours and daily recoveries continue to outnumber new cases for the 48th consecutive day. Total recoveries across the country so far have gone over 2 crore 94 lakh. Over 45,000 new cases were also reported during the last 24 hours. The country's active caseload further declined to over 5,37,000 and constitutes 1.77% of total cases. Weekly positivity rate remains below 5% and it is currently at 2.69%. Daily positivity rate is at 2.34% and it is less than 5% for 23 consecutive days. 817 deaths were reported across the country in the last 24 hours. The death toll due to the pandemic is now over 3,98,000. The country crossed yet another milestone in the COVID vaccination drive as the total inocula- inoculation coverage exceeded 33 crore 54 lakh mark yesterday. 
The Union Health Ministry said since June the 21st, more than 9 crore 14 lakh persons in the age group 18 to 44 years across 37 states and union territories have received their first dose. More than 25 lakh 14,000 vaccine doses were administered yesterday alone. Over 13 lakh 43,000 vaccine doses were administered as first dose and over 87,000 vaccine doses were given as second dose in the age group 18 to 44 years yesterday. Cluster-based mega-COVID vaccination drive will be launched in Uttar Pradesh from today. The state government aims to inoculate more than 10 crore people in the coming three months. More from our Lucknow correspondent. Target of this mega campaign is to vaccinate 10 to 12 lakh people daily and the focus will be to vaccinate maximum rural population. State vaccination officer Dr. Ajay Ghai told AIR that cluster strategy for vaccination will be implemented from today in all districts of the state. Government started the cluster method from 21st June in one third blocks and the results were quite encouraging. Cluster strategy is we divide eight blocks in clusters and divide all the clusters in the team. जाके वहीं सत्र लगा के टीकाकरण करते हैं उसका हमें बहुत अच्छा जो है रिजल्ट मिला है जो टीकाकरण जून में पहले करीब 4 4.5 लाख रोज पूरे यूपी में हो रहा था वो एकदम से 8 8.5 और एक दिन तो 9 लाख से भी ऊपर हुआ है वन थर्ड ब्लॉक्स में अभी हमने ये कार्यक्रम शुरू किया है लेकिन 1 जुलाई से सभी ब्लॉक्स में जब ये कार्यक्रम शुरू किया जाएगा तो डेफिनेटली 10 से 12 लाख का जो लक्ष्य है वो कोई चुनौती ज्यादा नहीं रहेगा मोर देन 3 करोड़ 12 लाख डोजेस ऑफ वैक्सीन हैव बीन एडमिनिस्टर्ड टू द बेनिफिशियरीज इन द स्टेट टिल डेट सुशील चंद्र तिवारी एआईआर न्यूज़ लखनऊ a total of 94 new cases of coronavirus infection were reported in the national capital in the last 24 hours. The Delhi government said during the same period, 240 people recovered and six deaths were reported in the city. Presently, the total number of active cases of COVID-19 in the national capital is 1,379. A total of over 2,3,000 beneficiaries were inoculated for COVID-19 in the last 24 hours and with this, over 77,53,000 beneficiaries have been vaccinated so far. Tamil Nadu registered 4,506 fresh cases of COVID yesterday. The state also reported over 5,500 recoveries. The state also recorded 113 deaths. 1,60,776 samples were tested through RT-PCR. The Jharkhand government has added more relaxations in COVID-related restrictions in the state in Unlock 5 after the existing Health Safety Week ends this morning. All shops, departmental stores, shopping malls, multiplexes shall now remain open till 8 p.m. till further orders. However, weekend lockdown will be observed. More details from our Rachi correspondent. More relaxations have been added in Unlock 5 after there is a decline in the number of active COVID-19 cases in the state. All shops and stores have been allowed to open till 8 p.m. from Monday to Saturday. Cinema halls, multiplexes, restaurants and bars will open with 50% of their capacity. Stadiums, gyms and parks will now be open from today. Religious places and educational institutions will remain closed while online teaching will continue. Government and private offices will work with 50% of their strength. Banquet halls, community places have been permitted to open with a maximum capping of 50% allowed. Public transportation has also been allowed with restricted seating arrangements. E-passes will be required for people coming to Jharkhand. Meanwhile, comprehensive testing of people will be carried out following centre's guidelines. Shilpi AIR News, Ranchi. The Cabinet has accorded approval for revised implementation strategy of BharatNet through public-private partnership model in 16 states of the country with optical fibre connectivity to all inhabited villages. Union Minister for Communications Ravi Shankar Prasad gave details about the decision during the media briefing. The Cabinet has given its approval for availing the benefit under Atmanirbhar Bharat Rozgar Yojana for another nine months from 30th of June this year to 31st of March 2022. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar yesterday met with Argentine Foreign Minister Philip Sola and discussed space, nuclear, lithium, investment and yoga. 
Meanwhile, the external affairs minister who's in Italy has addressed the G20 foreign ministers meeting at Matera under Italian presidency, followed by a joint meeting of the foreign affairs and development ministers. Jayashankar also met his counterparts from Britain, Japan, Canada, Saudi Arabia, Italy, Mexico and the EU during the G20 ministerial meetings. Italy holds the presidency of the G20 at present. The Foreign Affairs Minister's meeting is one of the ministerial meetings organized as part of the G20 Leaders Summit 2021. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan has said that Indian traditional system of medicine has contributed substantially in boosting immunity of the general population during COVID-19. He said it is important that such rich traditional knowledge of medicines and treatment needs to be integrated into the modern healthcare system through investments at different levels, not only as a response to COVID-19, but also to enhance the public health system. Dr. Harshwardhan said this while addressing a meeting with ministers of health of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO countries, through video conference yesterday. In China, tens of thousands gathered at Tiananmen Square in Beijing to participate in the celebrations of 100 years of Communist Party of of China. Our special correspondent reports that Chinese capital Beijing is under unprecedented state of security control with armed police forces and surveillance cameras all around the city. Various activities are being held across the country to celebrate the milestone with most focusing on the party's history. The CPC was founded by Mao Zedong and his associates in 1921. In sports news, in women's cricket, England beat India by five wickets in the second ODI to take the 2-0 series clinching lead at the Cooper Associates County Ground, Tata, England. For England, Sophia Dunkley and Catherine Brunt shared 92 runs for the unbroken sixth wicket to chase down the target of 222 with 15 balls to spare. Indian skipper, Captain Mithali Raj, top scored with 59 of 92 balls and stitched a 68-run partnership for the fourth wicket with Harman Preet Kaur as India were all out for 221 after being put into bat. For England, pacer Kate Cross took five wickets for 34. She was declared player of the match. The third and final ODI will be played at Worcester on Saturday. In Wimbledon tennis, world number one Novak Djokovic entered the third round on slick cross beating Kevin Anderson, K. Nishikori of Japan, ousted Alexei Popirin for his 100th Grand Slam match win. Seven-seeded Italian Mattia Berrettini won over Guido Pella of Argentina in 2 hours and 16 minutes to advance to the second round. In the women's section, second seed Arina Sabalenka of Belarus overcame British wildcard Katie Butler to reach the third round. Bianca Andrescu of Canada was shocked by France's world number 58 Alice Cornet. Number 3 seed Helena Svetolina of Ukraine beat Alison Van Youth of Belgium in the first round. In chess, Abhimanyu Mishra made history by becoming the youngest grandmaster. 12-year-old Abhimanyu from New Jersey re- broke the record of 12 years and 7 months set by Sergei Karyakin in 2002. He defeated 15-year-old Indian GM Leon Luke Mendonca, securing a performance rating higher than 2,600 over 900 over nine rounds, which constitutes a GM norm. With 23 days to go for Tokyo Olympics, AIR today is looking at 20-kilometer race walker Sandeep Kumar, who hails from a farming family in the Mahindragarh district of Haryana and had never heard of race walking until he joined the army. Born on 1st of May 1986 in the Mahindragarh district of Haryana, the experienced race walker Sandeep clinched his berth for the Tokyo by breaking the national record in 20 km race walking at the National Open Race Walking Championship in Ramchi in February. In fact, Sandeep had never even heard of race walking until he joined the army. His admission into the Jat Regiment Center tempted him to take up race walking professionally and dream of earning a medal in Olympics. The 35-year-old Sandeep broke a new national record previously set by Basant Bahadur Rana at the 2012 London Olympics at IAFF World Race Walking Camp at Taiwan, China in 2014. 
Sandeep earlier competed in the Rio Olympics in the 50 km category where he finished at the 35th position. For three months during the lockdown, Sandeep had to train on paddy field of farmland. A year of staying out of competition, he managed to break record and qualify for Tokyo Olympics. Sports Desk, AIR News. In the run-up to Tokyo Olympics, News Services Division of All India Radio in its Sports Scan program will broadcast every day Olympic Squares with AIR News. Olympic Squares Akashwani Samachar Ke Saath in Hindi from July 1st. Every day, a question related to Olympics will be asked at the beginning and closing of the program. To participate in this program, listeners can send their replies by email on airsportscan at gmail.com. The first correct answer received through email will be adjudged the winner of the quiz. The name of the winner will be announced in the Sports Scan program next day. It will also be flashed on a Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Sports Authority of India will provide India team jersey to the winner. So tune into Sports Scan program every day at 7:20 p.m. on FM Gold and our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for the day. The national capital Delhi may witness heat wave. The minimum temperature was 29 degrees and the maximum may go up to 41 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Chennai will see generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will vary between 27 and 37 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Srinagar will see mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Jammu will also have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Leh will have partly cloudy sky with the minimum and maximum temperatures varying between 11 and 27 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will hover between 15 and 33 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Dehradun will see thunderstorm with rain. Guwahati will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The minimum temperature was 24. The maximum will be up to 30 degrees Celsius. And now an overview of today's newspapers. India to EU. Accept COVID shield, Covaxin or face due quarantine is the headline in the Asian age. Must give ex gratia to COVID victims, says Supreme Court, reports in the Sun Times. Supreme Court direct center to frame guidelines for COVID-19 ex gratia plan within eight weeks, writes the pioneer. Center cautions Himachal Pradesh as Kinnor sees alarming 30% positivity rate, reports the Tribune. PM discusses COVID response, third wave preparation with ministers, writes the Hindustan Times. More drones seen in Jammu, security agencies put on alert, headlines the Asian age, Drones flying toys banned in JNK district after attack, writes the Hindu. Days after PM meet, delimitation panel plans visit to JNK, reports the Indian Express. And scores dead as heat wave grips Canada, US, reports the statesman. Scorched by the severe heat wave, Delhi records hottest day of the year at 43.5 degrees Celsius, writes the Times of India. Relief expected today, writes the Hindu. And now before we close the head ta- and the head bulletin, the headlines once again. Government's flagship program, Digital India, completes six years. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to virtually interact with beneficiaries. Today is GST Day, government to honor the taxpayers who have been part of GST's success story. Prime Minister to address the doctor's community at a program organized by Indian Medical Association this afternoon. Union Cabinet approves stimulus package of 6,28,000 crore rupees as part of Atmanirbhar Bharat package. Cabinet gives not for revised implementation strategy of BharatNet through public-private partnership model in 16 states. Interest rates to remain unchanged on small savings schemes, including national savings certificates and public provident fund for the second quarter of current financial year. Country crosses the milestone of administering 33 crore 54 lakh COVID vaccines. National COVID recovery rate increases to 96.92%. In Uttar Pradesh, cluster-based mega COVID vaccination drive to be launched from today to inoculate more than 10 crore people in three months. In chess, Abhimanyu Mishra becomes youngest grandmaster. In women's cricket, England beat India by five wickets in the second ODI clinched the series 2-0. And in Wimbledon tennis, Novak Djokovic, K. Nishikori and Matteo Barrettini advance. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.